वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू दिस न्यू एडिशन ऑफ द लेसन एनिमी विच वर रीड विच वी हैड रेड प्रीवियसली टूडे वी विल सी वॉट हैपन्स नेक्स्ट एज यू हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न दैट अ डॉक्टर अ जैपनीज डॉक्टर हैड ब्रॉट अ पेशेंट फ्रॉम द ओशन एंड ही ट्रीटेड हिम so let us continue with it when she came in first time she saw him summon his small strength summon means to collect to gather his strength small strength to be prepared for some fearful thing don't be afraid she begged him softly how come you speak english he gasped so the prisoner was quite Uh, surprised that a japanese woman could speak english and so he asked the lady how could she speak english and in return she told him that i was a long time in america she replied she saw that he wanted to reply to that but he could not and so she knelt and fed him gently with the porcelain spoon he ate unwillingly but still he ate now you will soon be strong she said not liking him and yet moved to comfort him he did not answer when sadao came in third day after now you will soon be strong said she liking him and yet moved to be comfortable he did not answer when sadao came in the third day after the operation he found the young man sitting uh, up his face bloodless with the effort lie down sadao cried do you want to die he forced the man down greatly and strongly and examined the wound you may kill yourself if you do this sort of things he scolded so the doctor did not like the patient getting up and moving so he scolded him and said if you move you will certainly die what are you doing uh, going to do with me the boy muttered he looked just now barely 17 are you looking to hand me over so the patient was quite afraid that this doctor may hand him over to the police for a moment sadao did not answer he finished his examination and then pulled the silk quilt over the man i do not know myself what shall i do with you he said i ought of course to give you to the police you are a prisoner of war do not tell me anything he he put up his hand as he saw the young man was about to speak do not even tell me your name unless i ask they looked at each other for a moment and then the young man closed his eyes and turned his face to the wall okay he whispered his mouth a bitter line outside the door hana was waiting for sadao he saw at once that she was in trouble sadao yumi tells me the servant feel they cannot stay if we hide this man here any more she said she tells me that they are saying that you and i were so long in so the servants were all afraid of this prisoner and they said that they will not work here any more if this prisoner is here for some times 
America that we have forgotten to think of our country first. They think we are Americans. It is not true, Sadao said harshly. Americans are I mean, our enemies. But I have been trained not to let a man die if I can help him. So, by nature, this man was, this Japanese man was a doctor and for him, the patient is more important than the enemy. The servant cannot understand that, she said anxiously. So he agreed. Neither seemed able to say more and somehow the household dragged on. The servant grew more watchful. Their courtesy was as careful as ever, but their eyes were cold upon the pair to whom they were hired. It is clear what a master ought to do, the old gardener said one morning. He had worked with flowers all his life and had been a specialist too in moss. For Sadao's father, he had made one of the finest moss garden in Japan sweeping the bright green carpet constantly so that not a leaf or a pine needle marred the velvet of its surface. My old master's son knows very well what he ought to do. He now said, pinching a bud from a brush as he spoke, what the man was so near death, why did he not let him bleed? So the gardener was also astonished that why the, this doctor is saving their enemy. That young master is so proud of his skill to save life that he saves any life. The cook said com contemporaneously. She spilled a bowl's neck skillfully and held fowl's neck skillfully and held the fluttering bird with, with let its blood flow into the roots of the wisteria vine. Blood is the best of fertilizer and the old gardener would not let her waste a drop of it. It is the children of whom we must think, Yumi said sadly. What did the uh, what will be their fate if their father is condemned as a traitor? They did not try to hide what they said from the years of Hana as she stood arranging the day's flower in the veranda nearby. And she knew they spoke on purpose that she might hear that they were <coughs> right she knew too in most of her being, but there was another part of her which she herself could not knew and spoke on purpose that she might hear. That they were right she knew too in most of her being. It was not sentimental liking of the prisoner. She she had come to think of him as a prisoner. She had not liked him even yesterday when when had said in his impulsive way, Anyway, let me tell you that my name is Tom. She had only bowed her little distant bow. She saw hurt in his eyes but she did not wish to assuage it. Indeed, he was a great trouble in the house. So, this pr prisoner was giving trouble to the entire household, the servants, the lady, and even the doctor. And finally, he told his name. He said that I am Tom. As for Sadao, every day he examined the wound carefully. The last stitches had been pulled out this morning and the young man would in 
a fortnight be nearly as well as ever. Sada went back to his office and carefully typed a letter to the chief of police reporting the whole matter. On the 21st day of February, an escape prisoner was washed up on the shore in front of my house. So far, he typed and then he opened a secret drawer of his desk and put the unfinished report in it. On the seventh day after that, two things happened in the morning. The servant left together. Their belongings tied in their large square cotton kerchief. When Hana got up in the morning, nothing was done. The house not clean and the food not prepared and she knew what it meant. She was dismayed and even terrified. But her pride as a mistress would not allow her to show it. Indeed, she inclined her head gracefully when they appeared before him in the kitchen and she was dismayed and even terrified with her pride as a mistress would not allow her to show it. Instead, she inclined her head gracefully when they appeared before her in the kitchen and she paid them off and thanked them for all that they had done for her. They were crying. But she did not cry. The cook and the gardener had served Sadao since he was a little boy in his father's house and Yumi cried because of the children. She was so grieving that after she had gone, she ran back to Hana. If the baby miss, misses me too much tonight, send for me. I am going to my own house and you know where it is. Thank you, Hana, said smiling. But she told herself she would not send for Yumi. However, the baby cries. She made the breakfast and Sadao helped with the children. Neither of them spoke to the servant beyond the fact that they were gone. But after Hana had taken morning food to the prisoner, she came back to Sadao. Why is it we cannot see clearly what we ought to do? She asked him. Even the servants see more clearly than we do. Why are we different from other Japanese? Sadao did not answer, but a little later he went into the room where the prisoner was and said briskly, Today you may get up on your feet. I want you to stay up only five minutes at a time. Tomorrow you may try it twice as long it would be well that you get back your strength as quickly as possible. So, Sada was um, telling the patient that now you have to walk a little, you have to stand a little. He saw the flicker, flicker of terror on the youth's face that was still very pale. Okay, the boy murmured. He eventually, he was determined to say more. I feel I ought to thank you, doctor, for having saved my life. Don't thank me too early, Sadao said coldly. He saw the flicker of terror again in the boy's eyes. Terror as unmistakably as an animal's. The scar on his neck were crimson for a moment. Those scars... What were they? Sadao did not ask. In the afternoon, the second thing happened. Hana, working hard on the unaccustomed labor, saw a messenger come to the door in official uniform. Her hands were weak and she could not draw her breath. The servant must have told already. She ran to Sadao, gasping, unable to utter a word. But... By then, the messenger had simply followed her through the garden 
and there he stood. She pointed at him helplessly. Sadao looked up from his book. He was in his office, the other partition of which was thrown open to the garden for the southern sunshine. What it is? asked the messenger, and then he rose, seeing the man's uniform. You are to come to the palace, the man said. The old general is in pain again. Ohana breathed, breathed. Is that all? All the messenger exclaimed. So, there was a man in uniform and Hana got afraid that perhaps the servant must have told the police that there is a Japanese prisoner of war in their house. And so she was afraid. She ran to Sadao to tell about the messenger. But finally the messenger was no one else but a messenger from the general. He was treating the general and now the general has called the doctor again because he was in great pain. And so Hana was now satisfied that this was nothing about the police. Is it not enough? Indeed it is, she replied. I am very sorry. When Sadao came to say goodbye, she was in the kitchen but doing nothing. The children were asleep and she sat merely resting for a moment more exhausted from her fright than from work. I thought they had come to arrest you. So Hana was really afraid that they must have come, the man in uniform must have come to arrest the doctor. She said. He gazed down into her anxious eyes. I must get rid of the man for your sake. He said in distress. Somehow I must get rid of him. Of course, the general was weakly. I understand fully. But that is because I once took a degree in Prince, Princeton, so few Japanese have. I care nothing for the man, Excellency, Sadao said, but having operated on him with such success. Yes, yes, the general said. It only makes me feel you more indispensable to me. Evidently, you can save anyone. You are so skilled, so general. The general was quite happy that Sadao had treated the patient and he did it very skillfully. You say, you think I can understand one more such attack as I have had today? Not more than one, Sadao said. Then suddenly, then certainly, I can allow nothing to happen to you, the general said with anxiety. His long, pale Japanese face became expressionless, which meant that he was in deep thought. You cannot be arrested, the general said, closing his eyes. Suppose you were condemned to death and the next day I had to have my operation. So the general was quite satisfied that the doctor had done his duty well and he doesn't want that Sadao should be arrested by the police because the general needed the doctor very much for his own treatment. There are other surgeons, Excellency, Sadao suggested. None I have trust, the general replied. So the general said, that I don't trust any other doctor except you. The best one have been trained by Germans and would co consider the operation successful even if I die. So the general said, other doctors have been, have completed their course and they were trained in German. And even if I die, those doctors will say that the operation was successful. 
I do not care for their point of view, he sighed. It seems a pity that we cannot better combine the German ruthlessly with the American sentimentality. Then, could you turn your prisoner over to ex execution? And yet, I could be sure you would not murder me while I am unconscious. The general laughed. He had an unusual sense of humor. As a Japanese, could you not combine these two foreign elements? He asked. Sadao smiled. I am not quite sure, he said. But for your sake, I would be waiting to try, Excellency. The general shook his head. I had rather not be the test case, he said. He felt suddenly weak and overwhelmed with the care of his life as an official in time such as these when repeated victory brought great responsibility to all, all over the South Pacific. It is very unfortunate that this man should have wasted up on your doorstep. He said irritably. I feel if so myself, Sadao said greatly. It would be best if he could be quite, quietly killed, the general said. Not by you, but by someone who does not know him. So the general said that let us get rid of this person and he should be killed but not by the doctor, but by someone else. I have my own private assassins. Assassin means who kills someone. Suppose I send two of them to your house tonight or better any night. You need know nothing about it. It is now warm. What would be more natural than that you should leave the outer partition of the white man's room open to the garden while he sleeps. So the general suggests that I will send two assassins and you should leave the room door open of the white man and they will go in the midnight and they will kill the man. So nothing will happen to you. The man will be silently killed. Good, the general said, yawning. They are very capable assassins. They make no noise and they know the trick of inward bleeding. If you like, I can even have them remove the body. So the general said, I will send two expert killers and they will kill the man and there will be no bleeding because they are quite expert in killing and they will even remove the body or take away the body from your house. Sadao considered that perhaps would be best excellency. He agreed thinking of Hana. So Sadao said, okay, it's good because he was quite afraid that Hana did not like all this. He left the general's presence. Then he went home thinking over the plan. In this way, the whole thing would be taken out of his hand. So, he would be fully, he would tell Hana nothing since she would be, tim, be timed at the idea of assassins in the house. And yet, certainly, such persons were essential in an absolute state, such as Japan was. How else? Could rulers deal with those who opposed them? He refused to allow anything but reason to be atmosphere of his mind as he went into the room where the American was in bed. But as he opened the door to his surprise, he found the young man out of the bed and preparing to go into the garden. What is this? he explained. Who gave you permission to leave your room? 
I'm not used to waiting for permission, Tom said gaily. Gosh, I feel pretty good again. But will the muscles on this side always feel stiff? Is it so, Sadao inquired, surprised. He forgot all these. Now I thought I have provided against them. He murdered. He li- He muttered. He lifted the edge of the man's shirt and gazed at the healing scar. Message may do it. Massage may do it, he said. If exercise does not, it won't bother me much, the young man said. This young face was drawn under the uh, stubbly blonde beard says doctor i have got something i want to say to you if i hadn't met a jap jap like you well i wouldn't be alive today i know that so the soldier said that if i had not m- met you doctor i would not have been al- alive today sada bowed but she could not speak sure i know that tom went on warmly his big thin hand gripped a chair where white at the knuckle i guess if all the japs were like you there wouldn't have been a war perhaps sadao said with difficulty and now i think you must you had better go back to bed he helped the boy back in to bed and then bowed good night he said sadao slept badly the night time and time again he woke up thinking he heard the rustling of footsteps the sound of a twig broken or a stone displaced in the garden a noise such as men might make who carried a burden the next morning he made the excuse to go first into the guest room if the american were gone he then could simply tell hana that so the general had directed the next but when he opened the door he saw at once that there on the pillow was the shaggy blond head he could hear the peaceful breathing of sleep and he closed the door again quietly he is asleep he told hana he is almost well to sleep like that what shall we do with him hana whispered her old refrain sadao shook his head i must decide in a day or two he promised so the doctor and hana both were worried with what to do with this white american but certainly he thought the second night must be the night so as the doctor had already spoken to the general that he will send two assassins to kill him and put him back somewhere so the doctor was waiting for the assassins there rose a wind that might and he listened to the sound of blending boughs and whistling partitions hana woke to ought we not to go and close the sick man's partition she asked no sadao said he is able now to do it for himself but the next morning the american was still there then the third night of course must be the night so the doctor was almost ready that maybe one day first night second night or the third night the assassin will come and kill the man the wind changed to quite rain and the garden was full of 
साउंड ऑफ ड्रिपिंग एवेस एंड रनिंग स्प्रिंग सदाओं स्लेप्ट अ लिटिल बेटर बट ही वोक एट द साउंड ऑफ अ क्रैश एंड लीप्ड टू हिज फीट वॉट वॉज दैट हाना क्राइड द बेबी वोक एट हर वॉइस एंड बिगैन टू वेल आई मस्ट गो एंड सी बट ही हेल्प हर एंड वुड नॉट लेट हर मूव सदाओं she cried what is the matter with you don't go he muttered don't go so the doctor was not allowing hana to go and see what is happening in the american's room his terror infected her and she stood breathless waiting there was only silence together they crept back into the bed the baby between them yet when he opened the door of the guest room in the morning there was the young man so again on the fourth day when the doctor opened the door he saw that the white man was still there he was very gay and had already washed and was now on his feet he had asked for a razor yesterday and had shaved himself and today there was a faint color in his cheek i am well he said joyously so thou drew his kimono around his weary body he could not he decided suddenly go through another night it was not that he cared for his young man's life no simply it was not worth the strain so the doctor thought let us wait for another night and see what happens you are well sadao agreed he lowered his voice so the doctor said to the prisoner that you are now all right you are so well that i think if i put my boat on the shore tonight with food and extra clothing in it you might be able to row to that little island not far from the coast it is so near the coast that it has not been worth fortifying so the doctor said that now you are quite fit to move and if i put some clothes and food in a boat and tell you to go you can row the boat and go and reach the island which is which is quite near nobody lives on it because in storms it is submerged so the doctor said there is a island very close to the shore and you can reach there no people stay here because it gets submerged when there is storm but this is not the season of storm you could live there until you saw a korean fishing boat pass by they pass quite near the island because the water is many fathom deep there the young man stared at him slowly comprehending do i have to he asked i think so sadao said gently you understand it is not hidden that you are here so the doctor said that everybody knows that you are here so it is it will be better that you leave my house and go to the island and when the korean uh, boat reaches there you can go ask for the help the young man nodded in perfect comprehension okay he said simply sadao did not see him again until evening as soon as it was dark he had dragged the stout boat down to the shore and in it he put food and bottle water that he had brought secretly during the day as well as two quilt he had brought at the pawn shop the boat he tried to a post in the water for the tide was high there was no moon and he walked without a flashlight so now doctor was getting ready to send this prisoner 
out of his house so he had purchased all what he the man required he purchased some quilts some other food and water bottles and in the evening when it was dark he tried to send this man out when he came to the house he entered as though he was just back from his work and so hana knew nothing so hana did not know where this man had gone yumi wo wo was here today she said as she served his supper though she was so modern still she did not eat with him yumi cried over the baby she went on with a sigh she missed him so the servant will come back as soon as the foreigner is gone the young man nodded in perfect i realize you save my life he told sadao not at all sadao said it is only inconvenient to have you here any longer so sadao said that it is inconvenient for us it is very troublesome for us to keep you here for some time more he said hesitatingly a good deal about giving the man a flashlight but he had decided to give it to him after all it was a small one his own which he used at night when he was called if your food runs out before you catch a boat he said signal me two flashes at the same instant the sun drops over the horizon do not signal in darkness as it will do not signal me in darkness for it will be seen if you are all right but still there signal me once you will find f- fresh fish easy to catch but you must eat them raw a fire would be seen okay the young man breathed so he told him what to do if the food is over he can flash two lights but he should not cook anything he should eat the fishes raw he was dressed now in the japanese clothes which sadao had given him and at the last moment sadao wrapped a black cloth around his blonde head now sadao said the young man young the young american without a word shook sadao's hand warmly and then walked quite well across the floor and down the steps into the darkness of the ground once twice sadao saw his light flash to find his way but that would not be suspected he waited until from the shore there was one more flash then he closed the partition that night he slept you say the man escaped the general asked faintly he had been operated upon a week before an emergency operation to which sadao had been called in the night for 12 hours sadao had not seen been sure the general would live the gall bladder was much involved then the old man had begun to breathe deeply again and to demand food so sadao now operated the general and it was a long 12 hours operation and now the general was quite all right sadao had not been able to ask about the assassin so far as he knew they had never come the servant had returned and yumi had cleaned the guest room thoroughly and had burnt sulfur in it to get the white man's smell out of it nobody said anything only the gardener was cross because he had not 
he had got behind with the chrysanthemum but after a week sadao felt the general was well enough to be spoken to about the prisoner yes excellency and eh, excellency he es- escaped sadao now said he coughed sighingly that he had not said all the he might have said but was unwilling to disturb the general further but the old man opened his eyes suddenly that prisoner he said with some energy did i not promise you i would kill him for you you did excellency sadao said well well the old man said in a tone of amazement so i did but you see i was suffering a good deal the truth is i thought of nothing but myself in short i got my promise to you i wondered your excellency sadao murmured he was certainly very careless of me the general said but you understand it was not lack of patriotism or derelictation of du- duty he took he looked anxiously at his doctor if the matter would come out you would understand that wouldn't you certainly your excellency sadao said he suddenly comprehended that the general was in the pain of his hand and that as a consequence he himself was perfectly safe i can swear of your loyalty excellency he said to the old general and to your zeal against the enemy you are a good man the general murmured and closed his eyes you will be rewarded but sadao snatching the spot of black in the twilighted sea that night had his reward there was no prick of light in the dusk no one was on the island his prisoner was gone safe doubtless for he had warned him to wait only for a korean fishing boat he stood for a moment on the veranda gazing out to the sea from whence the young man had come that other night and into his mind although without reason there there came another white face he had known the professor as whose house he had met hana a dull man and his wife had been a silly talkative woman in spite of her wish to be kind he remembered his old teacher of anatomy who had been so insistent on mercy with the knife and then he remembered the face of his fat and slatternly landlady he ha- uh, he had great difficulty in finding a place to live in america because he was a japanese the americans were full of prejudice and it had been bitter to live in it knowing himself they are superior how he had despised the ignorant and dirty old woman who had at last consented to house him in her miserable home he had once tried to be grateful to her because she had in his last year nursed him through influenza but it was difficult for she was no less repulsive to him in her kindness now he remembered the youthful haggard face of his prisoner white and repulsive strange he thought i wonder why i could not kill him 
so you see the doctor was quite kind to operate the prisoner and let him go free even without telling the policeman because his teacher or the professor from whom he learnt the art of surgery he had always told him that you should be kind to patients and it was when the american and the japanese were the enemies of each other at that time he saved the life of a american and for him it was to be a great deed so i hope students you have followed the story it was quite interesting i hope you read the story once again and then you will feel that what a difficult situation the doctor had faced with the white prisoner thank you